everyone and welcome. So today I'm going to show you all the books on my shelf. So basically I am going to do a bookshelf tour. And if you are wondering why I am a little bit sweaty, that's because I just filmed the entire bookshelf. And I think that the result is quite fine. I'm quite proud of it myself. I was very excited to do this because I recently got new shelves. So the ones that you see on the right I had for a while now. And I think that the, one of the first videos that I had on booktube was how I reorganized those shelves. But then the ones that you see on the left, the three small shelves that I have added, I added those last week. So we are going to start with those and then make our way through all of the shelves. I do have another small bookshelf that I will show you at the end, but a lot of those are classics or books that I haven't read yet. So that's why you are not going to see a lot of those. Now, just a couple of things before we get into the bookshelf tour. First of all, I have asked on Discord and on Instagram stories how most of you like bookshelf stores. And the results were a little bit mixed, so I tried to go a little bit in between and then hopefully make everybody happy. So I am not going to pull out every book. If I really like how the cover looks or something like that, I will. But I will mention all of the titles of standalones or of entire series. And if that's all that I mentioned, that means that I haven't read the book. If I mention a little bit more extra details, then I have read the book. So that way you can also see what my physical TBR looks like. Spoiler alert, I have a lot of unread books on my shelves. Another thing that I want to add is that most of the books on my shelves, of course, are fantasy books. So if I don't mention the genre, then you can assume that it's a fantasy book. If I do mention the genre, then of course it's the genre that I mention. But without further ado, let's get into the tour. So to start with the shelves that I have on the left, the top shelf, I have this little stack of books. And the ones on the bottom, these two big ones, are graphic novels for A Song of Ice and Fire. So there are actually 10 in total, but I only have these two because they are quite expensive and these 10 only encompass the story of the first book of the main series. So besides that, the story is quite the same, but it does have beautiful artwork. So that's a plus, I suppose. Then on top of that, I have Windhaven by George R. R. Martin and Lisa Tuttle. And then I have two books in the a world of A Song of Ice and Fire, if I'm not mistaken. So there are three in total, but I've read these two and it's much smaller in scope. You follow two main characters and that's it in uh, relationship to the main series. It does take place a couple of hundred years before. I liked it, but I wasn't really blown away by it, so I'm not going to buy the third one. And then I have A Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. So this is the only English book that I have on these shelves. And while this is a companion novel to The Kingkiller Chronicles, I haven't read it yet, but I haven't heard a lot of great things either, so I don't think that I ever will read it. And then I have, of course, the main series of A Song of Ice and Fire, so I've read all of these. And you can see that the third book in the series, so the blue and the pink one, are actually uh, separated, as well as the fifth book, so these two grey ones. So I have read the entire series, I love this series, it's one of my favorites of all time. And I am patiently awaiting the next book, hopefully it arrives soon, fingers crossed. So then next up we have the Earth Children series by Jane M. All. So this is historical fiction, if I'm not mistaken, with a little bit of magic inside. I haven't read any of these, but I do want to soon. They are pretty hefty and I have heard that they are quite slow. They do take place in the prehistoric era and that's something that I'm quite interested in. So I do hope that I can get to this series soon. Then I have everything by Tolkien. So I have The Hobbit. I have read this one. It's fine. It's a children's book. I'm not really head over heels with that one but this is the lord of the rings and if you are not new to my channel you know that i dnf this one so i actually dnf the first book after around 100 pages it's just not my cup of tea then we have the king killer chronicles by patrick Rothfuss. so the name of the wind and the wise man's fear one of my favorite series of all time and i do hope that we will get the third one soon and that it's a nice conclusion of the trilogy fingers crossed then I have the Witcher series by Andrzej Sapkowski. So I have read almost all of these. I have the two short stories, then I have the five in the main series, and then the prequel Season of Storms, and I still need to read that one. But I have enjoyed my time with the series. I actually like the main series more than the short stories. So I would say if you have read the short stories and you don't like them that much, to give the main series a try, at least the first book, because maybe you're like me and you just like that one more. And I do really want to get to Season of Storms soon, at least by the end of this year, to be honest. 
Then we have my Wheel of Time collection. So I have book one through nine, and then I also have the prequel. And if you know me, then you know that I've read some of the books, but not all, I DNF the series. So I have read book one. And so as you can see, I really like these covers. So this is the first one, The Eye of the World, and it's just cheesy fantasy covers. I love that. And I'm glad that I have these, even though I DNF the series, but it is what it is, at least the books are nice. Then I've read 2, 3 and 4, and I actually DNF'd the fifth book, The Fires of Heaven. So this is one of the things that I don't really mind if I have books on my shelves that I don't like, as long as I like the covers, because of course I'm going to buy books that I think I will like, but if I then don't and I like the covers, it still looks pretty on my shelves, so I'm still happy with it. Still, it's a shame that I didn't like the series, because I was hoping that I would. Then the Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. So I have Arcanum Unbounded and I also have Elantris. So I have read Elantris. I think that this is a very good book. I know that a lot of people say that it's the worst installment in the Cosmere collection. I do not agree. I think this is a fine one, but I do want to say that it's the odd one out in terms of magic system when it's used and also the pacing. Then I have Mistborn Era 1. So I quite enjoyed this trilogy. I think that the first one is quite tropey, nothing special, but the ending of the third one, The Hero of Ages, makes up a lot. And because of that ending, I would highly recommend everyone reading that series. Then Mistborn Era 2, for me the weakest in the Cosmere, so the first three books I have read, even though I didn't like them, because I do think that the next installment is better than the previous one, so for me The Bands of Mourning, which is the third book in the series, is better than The Alloy of Law, because in the next installment you always have a little bit more lore from Mistborn Era 1, so why I actually liked some of the parts in Era 2 is because they had more of Era 1, not because of the original content of Era 2. So for me, the weakest in the entire Cosmere collection, to be honest, and I am going to read the fourth one, but I'm not really looking forward to it. Then we have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This is a standalone at this point, even though a sequel is in the planning. And I do hope that it comes out because I love this one. I think that it's also an amazing one to start your Brandon Sanderson journey with because it's quite fast paced and I don't really like the cover, to be honest. I think that it's quite bland, nothing special, but it does fit the story with the colors that's coming out of her mouth and the white hair. So I do give it props for that, but I don't like it besides that. Then we have all the books in the Stormlight Archive collection. So the first four, which are currently published, but there are going to be 10 in total. And I haven't read any of these yet, but I want to soon because I want to be ready when the fifth one comes out, which will be the conclusion of the first arc. And I actually really like these covers, all of them. I like Brandon Sanderson covers in general because there is always a scene that is being portrayed. It's quite epic. And for me, the Oatbringer cover is actually my favorite one just because of the color scheme. And I actually don't know who's in front of there, but it's just epic and I like it. So then the last shelves on the left. And I am going to start with this pile of books that I have here. So we have Where the Crowd at Sing by Delia Owens, which is historical fiction. Then I have Parable of the Sour by Octavia E. Butler, which is sci-fi. And I am going to read this for the Expanding My Horizon series. Then I have The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes, Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, and Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long. And I have actually read Hall of Smoke. This is a standalone at this point, but the sequel is coming out next year. And I also think that this was a debut novel. I quite enjoyed it. I quite liked that you have gods walking among men, and it was inspired by Norse mythology, even though the gods are unique. There's also some inspiration from the Roman Empire, which I liked, but I do think that the ending was confusing and that could have been handled better. Still, I do recommend this if it sounds interesting to you and the ending, well, the author can grow since it is a debut. Then we have The Once and Future King by T.H. White, The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison, then we have A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay, The Wolf by Leo Caro, and Green Rider by Kristen Britton. So then we have all of these upright books, starting with Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward, The Invisible Library by Genevieve Gornicek, and For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. And this is actually going to be a bad read of mine that I'm going to do in September, and I'm quite looking forward to it, because it is a Red Riding Hood retelling, so that sounds amazing. Then we have Rune Marks by Joanne M. Harris, and next up we have Peter V. Brad's The Painted Man. Then we have The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is a new release of this year and I am going to read this one in November as part of a read-along, so put it into your agenda if you also want to read this one. Quite looking forward to that body read. Then we have The Amber Blade by Chris Wooding, The Masks of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick, and Rewrite the Storm by Devin Madsen. I think that this is a beautiful cover. The books 2 and 3 in the series are also beautiful, so I should read Rewrite the Storm pretty soon. 
Then I have The Black Prison by Ben Tweeks, The Wolf of Orin Yarrow by K.S. Velasso, and The Ranger of Marzana by John Scavern. This was a cover by, look at that cover, it's beautiful, and the second book in the series has an even more beautiful cover, so I am looking forward to reading this one as well, purely for the cover. Then I have Spinning Silver and Uprooted by Naomi Novik. These are both fairy tale retellings and I loved Spinning Silver, but I didn't really care for Uprooted. So yeah, there you have it. Then we have the Winnowing Flame trilogy by Jen Williams. So this is a series that I've read the first one, The Nine Terrain of, but I haven't read the second and the third one yet. And I loved The Nine Terrain. I think this was such a unique world setting character. So I should read The Bitter Twins quite soon. And I also really love the covers of these, like look at the cover of The Bitter Twins. Why am I not picking this one up? And they look so beautiful next to each other on the shelves. So this makes me happy. Then I have the Echoes of the Fall trilogy by Adrian Tchaikovsky with beautiful covers, but look at those spines. Those are beautiful as well. And then I have the Song of the Shattered Sand series by Bradley P. Bolio, or at least the first four books. So I have read the first two, being Twelve Kings and Blood Upon the Sand. And I really love these two, but I haven't read A Veil of Spears yet. And I want to at least this year. So this is a six book series with a standalone novella. So I still have five books to read. Next up, I have the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. So I have read these three books and I quite enjoyed them. I have a review up on my channel. I don't think that it's the best Grimdark that I've ever read, but I do think that the character work is phenomenal. And I hope that that will only get better when I get further in the First Law universe. Because as you can see, I have the three standalones that I still need to read, hopefully next year. So I have the Heroes, I have Red Country, and I have Best Served Cold. And then in the corner, I have the Rift War Saga by Raymond E. Feist, so I am going to read these ones soon. I think that I am going to start in August and I am looking forward to this classical fantasy. At the top of the shelves I have the Ash and Sand trilogy by Richard Nell and I am going to start reading that one in August as part of a read-along, really looking forward to that. Then next to it I have the Raven's Shadow trilogy by Anthony Ryan. I've read Bloodsong a while ago and really enjoyed that one and I am now making my way through the series and finishing it up in August. Then next to those trilogies I have two duologies. So the first one is River Into Darkness by Sean Russell. And then next to that, I have The Sacred Hunt duology by Michelle West. I DNF that one. And then I have Never Die by Rob J. Hayes with a beautiful cover, as you can see here. And I do hope to get to that one soon. And next to it, I have The Traitor Bar Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. So here we have a little stack of books and at the bottom we have Lateral in the Mist by Jean Wolfe. These are the first two books in a four book series and I am really looking forward to this one. Then I have The Raven and the Reindeer by T. Kingfisher, Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey and Mercedes Lackey's The Black Swan. And I really like this cover, it's old school fantasy in my book, so really enjoy that one. And then here on display, I have The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. So this is a debut, as you can see, it's a new release that I'm really looking forward to. So now my very small manga collection and I have the first two in Full Metal series, the Full Metal edition. And I have read the first one, I thought it was fine, but nothing really special. I have heard that it gets better, so I need to read the second one soon. Then I have Finland Saga, so book one, two and three, and I have read book one and two, but I still need to get to book three. So this is historical fiction with Vikings and it's one of my favorite series up at this point. Then I have Death Note volume 1 and 2 of the Black Edition, so I have read these two and I now need to read the third one soon. And next to that I have Mouse the Complete Collection and this is a must read in my opinion if you are interested in World War II and especially Holocaust survivors. Next to that I have the first volume of The Witches and pff, to be honest, I didn't really care for this one because I don't like the artwork. It's very difficult to follow everything because of the artwork. And also it's the first volume, which I didn't know. I thought that this was just a graphic novel. So then we have my small collection of historical fiction and we have Mornings in Janine by Suzanne Abdulwa, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr and Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. I have read all three of these a couple of years ago, absolutely adored them and I would recommend them if you are looking for something a little bit different, um, with a different setting you could say. For example, we have Mornings in Janine which takes place in Palestine, then we have Thousand Splendid Sons taking place in Afghanistan if I'm not mistaken, and then All the Light We Cannot See takes place in World War II where we follow a soldier and a young girl. 
you could say that there is a little bit of magic in this one, but not enough to make it anything else than historical fiction. I then have these two by Coletto Sani that I still need to read, so The Kite Runner and And the Mountains Echoed. And next to it I have The Life of Pi by Jan Martel. And then I have this stack of books, as you can see by Ken Follett. So the first one is Pillars of the Earth and then everything else. The top one is in English, A Column of Fire. And then I have The Shadows of the Wind by Carlos, who is Zafon. So here I have The Course of Dragons. So the first three books, it is going to be a quartet or the fourth one is already out, I think. And the first one is called The Rune of Kings and the author is called Jen Lines. Next to it, I have the first two in the Greenbone Saga series. So the third one is coming out later this year. So this is Jade City and then Jade War by Fonda Lee. And then the trilogy on the right is um, the Golden Wolf Saga. So the first book is The half Drowned King, then we have The Sea Queen and then The Golden Wolf, so by Linnea Hartzucker. I have read the first book, but I have DNF'd it, unfortunately, because I didn't like it. It's historical fiction, and I think that the covers are beautiful enough that I still want to keep them on my shelves, but unfortunately the story wasn't that good, and especially the character development. I do have the Sea Queen double because of an error by Book Depository, but I think that the cover is beautiful as well. Then I have The Binding by Bridget Collins and The Poison War Novels by Sam Hawk. So I do have City of Lies twice and I have read it and really enjoyed it. It's quite unique and you have poisons, you have a lot of political intrigue. It's a little bit static because it takes place in a city, but I liked it. I still need to read Hollow Empire though, which is the second one in what remains a duology, I think. Next to it, I have The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I didn't like this one, so I DNF'd it after 60 pages, which is a shame because it's a beautiful book, but it's also pretty thick. Then I have Lancelot by Jills Christian and A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. Read both and quite enjoyed the series, with a lot of romance, of course. So then we have a stack of books with a lot of glare, and this is a Nightrunner series by Lynn Flewelling. So the next one that I need to read here is Shadows Return. I have read the first three, and I quite enjoyed the first one, but I disliked the third one. So I do hope that the series gets better after that, because as you can see, I own all of them at this point. I am committed. Then next to it, I have the first two in the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Lu. I'm really looking forward to this one and I hope to get to them soon. And next to them I have the first two books in the Tierling series by Erica Johansson. So the Queen of the Tierling and then the Invasion of the Tierling. And then on display I have my beautiful edition of Spinning Silver. I'm so happy with that one. So then I have my Fateful and the Fallen series by John Quinn. So I have read Malice and Valor and enjoyed those two, and I am going to read Ruin this month and then Red. So I'm quite looking forward to what happens because I liked Valor quite a lot. Then I have The Once and Future Witches by Alex Myers. So as you can see, a beautiful cover, but not a good story in my opinion. I did finish it, but I wish I DNF'd it. And next to it, I have a book that I would recommend, which is The Story of Silence by Alex Myers. And it follows a main transgender character. And I actually quite enjoyed this book. So I would recommend picking it up because it's quite unique. Then next to it, I have the entire popular trilogy by R.F. Kuang. I've read the first two and I'm currently listening to the third one, as you can see here with my bookmark. I quite enjoyed it. I think that this is an amazing grimdark series with a quite unique theme and a lot of influence of history. So definitely recommend it. Then next to those, I have Prince of Thorns and King of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I am still looking for the third one in that trilogy. And then I also have the Book of the Ancestor trilogy by him. Haven't read any of these, but want to soon because I've heard a lot of amazing things. Then next to them, I have The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart, Blood of an Exile by Brian Nasland, and The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman. Unfortunately, I DNF'd that last one because I didn't like it at all. Then I have Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and next to it, the entire Winter Night trilogy by Catherine Arden. Love this series. I love The Baron the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch. And I think that I would recommend this to anybody who's looking for historical fantasy, because it takes place in medieval Russia, with just a beautiful atmosphere. It has a very fairy tale esque writing style, and yeah. I just loved it, would recommend to anybody who's interested. Then I have The Counselor by A.J. Beaton, The Queens of Innisfree by Tessa Grattan, and Sister Song by Lucy Holland. 
This is one that I have read. It's a standalone. It's also historical fantasy taking place in early medieval England, if I'm not mistaken. And here you have three main sisters who you follow. Very strong characters. Definitely recommend this one. I think that this one did what the Once and Future Witches tried to do right. So it's also a new release from this year. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller. I've read it. I think it's fine, but not as good as everybody else says. And then we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Beautiful cover. New release and also from a debut author, but I still need to read it. Next, I have The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek, Norse mythology retelling, and I think that this is a lot better than Circe, so I would definitely recommend anyone who's interested to pick that one up. Then we have The Chronicle of the Unhoom Throne trilogy by Brian Staveley. I love this trilogy, love this author. It is grim dark with beautiful covers, so what more can you ask for, to be honest? Then I have Skullsworn, so this is a standalone novel in the same world as the original trilogy. I DNF'd this one because I just couldn't connect to the characters and it was a major disappointment. The Empire's Rune is the start of a new trilogy that takes place in the same world as the Chronicle of the Unhoon Throne, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It just arrived in the mail. And then I have Beyond Redemption and The Mirror's Truth by Michael R. Fletcher, book one and two in the Manifest Delusions trilogy. So I have read Beyond Redemption this month and I really liked it. So unique. So I want to read The Mirror's Truth soon. Then I have Priest of Bones by Peter McLean and The Wounded Kingdom trilogy by R.J. Baker. Want to read that one soon. I have The Women's War by Jenna Glass. And then I have The Enchanter General trilogy by Dave Duncan. So Ironfoot is the first one and I really like this one and would recommend if you're looking for a quick read as sort palette cleanser. I have The Mythic Dream, which is a short story collection of a lot of different authors. Then I have A Queen in Hiding by Sarah Kozlov, An Illusion of Thieves by Kate Glass, which has a beautiful cover in my opinion. Then I have The Lost Queen trilogy by Sydney Pike. So I have read The Lost Queen. I have not read The Forgotten Kingdom yet. Want to read this month. And I think that this is beautiful historical fantasy. If you like Juliette Merlier, you will probably like this trilogy as well. Then I have my entire Juliet Merlier collection, so the Seven Waters trilogy and Daughter of the Forest is my favorite book of all time. Then I have the second Seven Waters trilogy, so these two and this one that I still need to read. And then I have the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy and again, still need to read this one. It has beautiful covers. All Juliet Merlier's books have beautiful covers in my opinion. Then next to it, I have a duology that I have read and liked a lot, The Saga of the Light Isles. And then this duology I have not read yet, Wildwood Dancing duology. Then in the corner, I have the Brede Chronicles trilogy. So I have read The Dark Mirror, but the other ones I have not read. And I think that The Dark Mirror is a very good book. It's quite similar to Daughter of the Forest in terms of the romance and a strong female character. And now I need to read Blade of Fortrio quite soon because I want to continue with the story. Then I have the Warrior Bards trilogy, so the first two books. The third one is coming out later this year. And I think that this one is the first one in the trilogy that I still need to read again. Then we have Raise the Sands and The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. So these are two standalone novels. I have read Raise the Sands, but I haven't read The Bone Maker yet and I want to soon. Both have quite interesting main characters. So in Raise the Sands, you follow a mother, so an older main character. And then in The Bone Maker, you follow a widow. Then we have The Sword of Kaigen, and I am going to read this one in September as part of a read-along. So if you're interested, then definitely join us. On top of that one, we have Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. This is a fantasy romance that I'm currently reading. I'm not too far in, but I'm not really enjoying it that much because the main love interest is a gladiator and that just doesn't really appeal to me. So yeah, <laughs> a little bit of a turn off. Then I have two fantasy standalones by Patricia A. McKillop. So I have Alphabet of Thorns and The Forgotten Beasts of Eld. And she is definitely an OG fantasy author who writes modern and original fairy tales with a lot of nature and animals. And she has also a very fairy tale esque writing style in general. So I have read The Forgotten Beasts of Eld and it was fine. I wasn't really connected to the characters, but of course, as a fairy tale often goes, the characters don't really have a very big development and it's a quite short book, so that's to be expected. And then I have the first book in the Discworld series, The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Then my Realm of the Elderlings collection in Dutch. So starting with the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hopp, absolutely adore this trilogy, of course. 
Then I have the Life Ship Creatives Trilogy, and of course I loved it as well, especially the second and the third book. And then next to it I have the Tawny Man Trilogy, all five stars, and I recently finished that one. Then I have the Rainwild Chronicles, so the least favorite by most of the fans, and this is going to be my next read, so fingers crossed that I will like it. And then next to it I have the final trilogy in the entire series, so the Fits and the Fool series. And this cover, I just love it, but I'm probably going to cry at the ending, I know already. Then I have a trilogy that I haven't read yet, and that is the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. But the first book, The Shadow of What Was Lost, is my second number for the booktube spin, so I might read it in a couple of months. And then I have a beautiful edition of Piranesi by Susanna Clark. So this was actually the first pick of my booktube spin, so I will read this in the next couple of months. Here we have my very small sci-fi collection, so starting with Dune, which I am currently reading and enjoying so much, I was afraid because it's classical sci-fi, but I'm loving it, all the political intrigue, it's amazing. Then next to those I have everything by Pierce Brown at the moment, so the Red Rising trilogy, I have a review, didn't like Red Rising but loved Golden Sun and Morning Star. And then I also have Iron Gold and Dark Age, so I have read Iron Gold, but I have not read Dark Age yet. I think that it's fine, but it's not as good as the original trilogy, in my opinion. Then shifting a little bit to the right, I have another stack of books, and on the bottom I have the entire Kingdom of Grit series by Tyler Whiteside, and on top of that I have King's Dragon by Kate Elliott, which is the start of a very large series. And I am going to show you the covers because I just love how this looks. This screams traditional fantasy and I just need to own the entire series because of that. And then this was actually a cover buy because I think the covers look amazing, but the premise of the story is also very interesting, so I need to read that one soon. Then some more of my Dutch fantasy books, starting with the Grim Company trilogy by Luke Skull. I love this trilogy and I would definitely recommend it to everyone who likes Joe Abercrombie because it's very similar. Next to it I have the first three books in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I read the first one but I didn't really like it so I'm not going to continue. And next to it I have the Memory, Sour and Thorn trilogy by Tad Williams. The first or the last two books are divided so that's why it's four books in total. Then next to that I have a small stack of books, as you can see, these are all Dutch. So the bottom one is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson in Dutch, and then the one on top is Robin Hobb Dutch, actually the two on top are Robin Hobb's books in Dutch, and then these two I got for free. So one is The Jungle Book and the other one is Robin Hood, I've never read them, but I got them for free, so why not? And then completely in the corner I have The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, the first book in the Devabat trilogy that I need to read soon. I also wanted to show you this small bookcase with a lot of classics, but I am going to go over it soon because I haven't read a lot. So here we have, of course, a lot of classics, as you can see. So Jane Austen, the Bronte sisters, Charles Dickens and Scott Fitzgerald. And then here I have another copy of Emma by Jane Austen. Have not read any of these. This is Reynard the Fox, which is a Flemish classic. I don't think that a lot of people know it, but I love this book and this cover. And it's all in poetry style. So this is one that nobody will know, but I quite enjoyed it. Then next to it we have The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, loved this one. And then we have Schindler's List, and then we have a couple of Dutch classics that nobody will know, I suppose. But we have one favorite of mine that I think most people will know, it's true classic, and that is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. Then on the other shelf, again a lot of classics that I haven't read yet, besides George Orwell 1984, which I loved. And then on this stack there are a lot of Dutch classics that again I don't think that most people will know. Maybe some people might know Harry Mullish because he's quite well known, but then in the middle we do have Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, which I need to read <laughs> soon. And then on the bottom again a lot of books that I haven't read yet, but I did like Joe Hill's Heart-Shaped Box, which is a horror book and really creeped me out. And then A Thousand and One Ideas That Will Change the Way We Think, which is my only non-fiction book. So those were all of the books that I own. I hope that you enjoyed this tour. Um, please let me know what you think of the books that I haven't read yet. Do you think that I should pick them up ASAP? And also let me know if you want to do a body read of any of those. I'm always open for that. I cannot guarantee that I have a space open in my next TBR, but definitely by the end of the year we can read some books together if you want to. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye!